I'm going to go to task one, but I'm also going to open the mark scheme at some point. But let me quickly explain what task one needs you to do first. When you go into the task one folder, you're going to have a PDF. The PDF I have is going to look different from your exam paper, but it's going to have more or less the same information. So don't worry too much about how it looks. And what is task one going to have? If I scroll down to this section here, it tells us exactly what's going to be in task one. And task one is going to have a Gantt chart where you have to demonstrate or show how to do certain things. Task one is also going to have a plan for the resources selected and associated costs. So it's a cost plan, essentially. And task one is also going to have a rationale that explains your planning approach and justifies the decisions you made. It says here to save your Gantt chart as a PDF file and as either an Excel file or a Microsoft project file. Now my recommendation, this is just my recommendation, save it as a PDF, but also leave it as a Microsoft Excel document and or leave it as a Microsoft project file. Reason being, whenever you export a Gantt chart as a PDF, it does not this it does this weird thing where it expands it, it across different pages. So for example, you might have things running across your screen from left to right. But because a PDF normally doesn't have that much space on a typical A4 piece of paper, what it's going to do, it's going to cut some of it off. And when it cuts it off, it's going to put it on the other page. So reading a Gantt chart on a PDF exported as an A4 piece of paper is going to be very, very tricky. Make the examiner's life very easy. Export it as PDF because it's like three or four clicks, file export or file save as PDF. Definitely do it, but also please leave it as an, as an Excel file or as a Microsoft project file. So when the examiner clicks on it and opens it, if they have Excel or Microsoft project, they can simply go ahead and read every single thing that you've put in and see the layout exactly how you meant for it to be seen. Create the Gantt chart. You're going to be given some information. For example, you're going to be told what the project is going to be about, how long the project should take, the people who are going to be working on the project. For example, we have here Kriya Sorval. You're going to have roughly five or six people working on the project and they're each going to have specific skills that they bring to the team. For example, the person Person, the first person here, I'm not going to say the name again, is a senior software engineer. The next person is a junior software engineer. The next person is a data engineer. Next, we have network engineer. Next, we have cloud architect. The cloud architect would be the person who simply draws up the plans of what it should look like and maybe and explain why it should look like that as well. So the people in your Gantt chart are going to be your resources. So these are human resources. The people, I repeat again, the people are going to be your resources. You're going to be somewhere on your um, in your exam paper. It's going to look something like this. You don't have to stick to the time frame exactly how it is. You don't have to stick to the um, the amount of hours exactly how it is. This is supposed to be your interpretation of how well you could manage this project. For example, it says here the upgrading infrastructure should take roughly 26 hours. If yours takes 20, that's fine. If yours takes 30, 36, that's fine as well. But you must be able to justify this later on. The wording of this might change for later papers because again, this is the, the sample one they put on for 2021. The wording of this might change, but it's going to be more or less the same thing. At least eight minor faults will be found with each module. So the modules are these things here, eight minor faults for each module. So for module one, you're going to go ahead and figure out a way to add eight faults into your Gantt chart. No more than two major faults will be found throughout the whole project. So not just for the modules, but for the entire project, you're going to have roughly two major faults. Each member of staff would work seven hours a day, five days a week. So a typical full-time job, seven to nine-ish hours per day. So now that we've had a, a, a quick gloss over of what needs to be done for the Gantt chart. Again, your teachers will need to go over this in more detail with you, but this is just a glossing over of what needs to be done. This is the mark scheme. I'm going to scroll down the task one where it says planning a project. Ideally, you should go through all of this stuff here with your teachers at some point. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to simply go to where it says assessment focus here and speak about the Gantt chart. So the project tasks are somewhat organized in a logical and efficient manner. These are the two main things you need to focus on. Logical and efficient or logical or efficient. You might be asking yourself, what exactly does logical and efficient mean in this context? All right. Logical is more or less a waterfall type system where one task simply comes after another and they keep going like that for the entirety of the project. Efficient is going to be where you have multiple tasks running at once because you have, I'm going to say five people. I, I didn't count the amount of people, but let's say you have five people working on the same project at the same time. They all have different skills. I could have my cloud architect working alongside my, my network engineers. As I mentioned before, I think the most recent paper I looked at probably um, had the project at 18-ish weeks. You don't have to stick to this 18 weeks strictly. If your project comes in at 16 weeks or 20-ish weeks, once the start date 
of your project is what it was said on the exam paper. So for example, if it says the 10th of January, 2025, that's when the project needs to start. So your Gantt chart must show exactly when it needs to start. And then obviously um, you show the dates of each project starting and ending and, and, and each process overlapping and leading into another one. Just typical Gantt chart stuff, but it doesn't have to strictly be the 18 weeks or the 20 weeks or whatever weeks your exam paper is going to have. And the final part I want to look at, it says resources have consistently been assigned to the project tasks effectively. The resources are the people, the people are the resources. So we're looking at human resources here and it says resources have uh, consistently been assigned to the project tasks effectively. What this means, the right person for the right job. It's, a, it's, a, it's as simple as that, the right person for the right job. So let me go back quickly and let me look at some of the tasks. I don't know all the people. I don't remember all the people. I remember the list had a, someone who was a cloud architect. It says develop and deploy a virtual cloud server. So if this is something you're going to do, if the person, person or persons working on this, you must have at least one person working on this who is very qualified in that area. I would make the assumption that the cloud architect would definitely be able to be able to design, maybe not de uh, develop and deploy, but at least be able to design this. If you had a cloud engineer, then fine, they would be able to develop and deploy this. This is somewhat loose. Again, this is my interpretation of this. I don't think the people who write these exam papers fully drill down into what these people actually do on a day-to-day -day basis. Because if you think about it, an architect is someone who designs a building. So a building architect designs a building. A cloud architect does more or less the same thing. They design the system that the engineer is supposed to uh, develop. So just like an architect for a building designs the building, and we have like a builder who goes out and physically does it, this is the same thing for cloud architect and cloud engineer. But don't get caught up on that too much. Just know that you need to put the right people in the right place. There is something else that's needed for the Gantt chart that, I, that isn't actually mentioned here. You can have multiple people working on the same task at the same time. However, what you should never ever do, let me scroll up to the very top of this list again. What you should never ever do is have someone who is not an internal employee working on a project by themselves, especially if it is a, like a, 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 a mission critical thing. I would never have an external person who is simply contracted, meaning they don't work for the company. I call them in for like a week or two weeks or they work for some random company. They come in, they solve a problem and they go. I would never have someone like that working on my database by themselves, not having anyone else look over their work. What you should ideally have is an experienced person or a semi-experienced person working on the project and you can have a junior person with them, you should never, never, ever have a junior person by themselves. That's number one. Uh, or you could also have a senior internal person working on something and also have a senior external person. Again, a contractor is not somebody who works for the company. They are an external entity, an external person. They don't work for the company. So just a quick recap of what I just said, never have a junior person working on something by themselves. Even if you have the junior person working for 10 hours on a thing by themselves, you, sh you should have a more senior person who has experience in that area come and check over it for maybe two, three, four, five hours. Never have them do anything by themselves for the entirety of the project. Also, this is not shown in this old 2021 paper I have here, but in the newer papers, they do have contractors. A contractor is someone who does not work for the company. So let's say we have company A, right? Company A does some IT stuff and they have people that work for them and they also have people that they bring from outside. So imagine your school. Your school has teachers, they work for them. They have probably an IT department. They probably have cleaners and all of that stuff. But when they want something very specific done, so let's say the IT department has designed the way they want the network. They might have a network engineer that they hire for maybe a day, two, three, four, five days to come in and actually do the thing that they said they wanted to do. That person is a contractor. They don't work for the school, but they can come in and do some work. This person who's a contractor will never, ever, ever be allowed to do everything Everything by themselves and no one checks over their work. You should ideally be doing the same thing. If you have a contractor, and again, please keep in mind, this older paper does not have the contractor thing on there as far as I'm aware. If you have a contractor coming in, someone who is an external person, you should never let them work on anything by themselves. So when doing your Gantt chart, you could put Jenny Jones as, let's say, the internal person, but you could also put um, Harpreet has an external person. So you have two people working on the same thing at the same time. Please do keep in mind, this is a work in progress. So if you've watched this video and you think actually you've left out this bit, or maybe you should add this or explain this a bit more, leave a comment below and we will re-record this video and add as much detail as possible.